Good day. Uh, got something a little bit different. Um, this is a Warmoth body and a Warmoth neck. I'm going to show the back of the neck. Beautiful gold body there. It has got in Kinman, not Kinsman, Kinman HX pickups. I imagine they're pretty good. Um, came to me needing a setup and needing a brass nut cutting. I've already started cutting the brass nut. Now the brass nut itself, the string spacings were always on there, already on there, and, and the little grooves were, were cut into, but the grooves were just like as wide as a Stanley blade or something. Uh, you just get a Stanley blade in that gap there, just in the top half. So I'm using my um, nut slotting files to slot, get the slots right. Now, as you can see, Those nut slots look quite wide. They're actually not wide where the strings are, but they're wide at the top because first I flared them with a triangle file. Flared them open and then I went in with my Hosco files, like this one for instance, two sided. You got a, a point, you got a 10 and a, and a 26. Next step up will be a 13 and a 36, which is that one of my next step up from that is a 17 and a 46. So you got string gauges 10 to 46. If we ever do a 942, we use them and um, it just has to make do with it. But if we need to go a little bit wider, all we do is we just angle the file in there. Now, because I don't want to knacker these files, and they are very hard wearing, we're a, we're a great brand, a Hosco brand, Japanese. Um, I decided to go in and flare them open with the three sided file just to, just to get me started, and I'll finish off with these. Um, important thing is not to go too deep on these slots because if you go too deep, you knacker the knot, you've got to put another one on. And I don't have them in stock. So what I'm doing is I'm going down. We've got to have the string slots perfectly horizontal, otherwise we get fretboards on a brass nut. And I'm also checking the height of the string, the bottom of the string above the first fret. I don't want to be below 0.3 millimeters or a third of a millimeter. Because that's recommended height. We could go down to 0.25, but I don't see the point of going that low. You're going to start getting buzzed. So what I'm doing is, I've already done these three. Got the feeler gauge here, but 0.4 there and a 0.3. Once I get it down to 0.4, then I'd, I'd file a little bit more careful, go to 0.3. Now, what I've decided to do, because these three strings were on my guitar when it came to me. Now, you may notice it's a completely scalloped fingerboard, it scallops all the way along. So, I, to get make sure the next level, I can't put a notched straight edge on there. So, basically, what I've got to do is I stick a straight beam of metal or, or, or a, a strip of steel, which I have. And more or less check by eye, but get the steel on there and get it pretty close. I only want a tiny bit of relief in there if I can get some, but for all intents and purposes right now, I've got my neck completely straight. That's why I don't want to get the action too low right now. Now what I'm going to do is, because these three strings are on there, I've used them strings for doing these slots, but these, there's no strings here. And I've got a full set of strings which were supplied with the guitar, which are going on the guitar when I set it up. So I also don't want to touch them. Now what I do have in stock is, I always used to buy um, rotor sands strings. Now I buy rotor sands because you always get a spare first string, top string. So I've managed to accumulate quite a few on them and these are brand new. I've got loads of them. I've got about one, two, three, four, five, I've got eight in there. Absolutely brand new. So I'm going to use one of these and I'm going to do these slots one at a time because I know where my gauge is I'm going to get the right cut so I'm just going to use one of these rather than knacker a set of strings I'm going to use one of these brand new tens and I'm going to do it for all three up for the next three string slots it's always good to have these spare because if I ever snap a string when I'm tuning a guitar in when I'm stretching them I always snap the top E and I snap loads on them because maybe I'll stretch them too hard and I need to be a little bit less heavy handed. So I'm going to stick one of these on. I'm going to use that string to do these three final nut slots. You'll see also it's a reverse head stock affair, upside down fender logo. So I'd say this is probably a right handed neck, a left handed, left, uh, a left -handed guitar neck, and it's been put on upside down. And that's how it's going to be used. So all fine and dandy there. So like I say, these last three slots I'm going to use up one string. I'm going to thread it through 
and I'm going to use it for all these slots, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to get them cut. Once they're all cut, I'll remove all the strings and I'll reshape this nut completely. Once it's all reshaped and done and I'm happy with it, I'll set the relief in the neck. I'll check the frets for fret level. It should be pretty level. Um, and I'll set about getting the guitar set up, get all the bridge set up, saddles and everything. Uh, set the pickle heights, test it, get it plugged in, test it. And uh, this will be ready to go back to its owner later. Um, it will be done today. Um, so I will come back when I've got a bigger update. See you soon. Right, I'm going to show where I am with this nut and show you how I go about setting the slot height on the nut above the. Uh, well, it's easier to show you than it will be to explain. So I'm going to come in. There you go, you'll see enough there. Right, okay, so here's the nut. You'll see now I've got grooves cut in, which I started them off with this file. It's a three edge file, really sharp one, this one. Beautiful file, I love it. The idea was to grind this down and make it a fret file, but I'm leaving it as this for now. So I've flared open the frets and I've gone in with each individual fret slotting file. This one here, for instance, is a 0 0.017. Uh, to carve into that. The next one will be a third, 013 or a 13 string gauge for that one. And the next one would be a 10 or 010. Blah, 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 blah. And what I do is, once I've flared them open, I'll take each string slot. This one will be a 17 for instance. And I'll just shape the groove. And what I'm looking for it's about 0.4 mil above the fret. So the bottom of the string to the top of the fret should be about 0.4 mil. And I should get no reaction from this feeler gauge. Just touching though. Just that's what I want, just getting that buzz because when I go with a 0.3 underneath. Absolutely fine. And again with the next string. Now, because I'm using one string for this lot, I'll just move it across to the next one. Just moving 0.13. I'll go again with the feeler gauge. Try and keep out of the way. Just touching. So when I go 0.3, the mill. Perfect. And then I'm going to move across to the last string. 0.010 or gauge 10. I'll go over 0.4, just touching. So if I go over 0.3, it's not touching. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to remove all the strings. I'm then going to cough. I don't know if this nut will come out of the guitar. Ideally, I'd remove this nut from the guitar and I'll carve the top. Basically, I'm going to remove these strings. Get your strings out of the way. And what I'm going to do is, what I plan to do is carve the top and remove all this material. I've got the slots now all spaced out correctly. The bottom of the slots is the right width. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to carve all this top off and I'm going to go in with each individual file and just shape the bottom of each slot I'm not going to remove any more material and what I'm going to do is I'm going to carve and shape this nut with a file. Now it can make it a lot lot easier if this will if I can get this off the guitar. So I'm going to try that. I'm going to remove the strings and I'm going to try that because then I can just do it in a vice. Make it so much easier. If not, if I can't get it off the guitar without causing any damage, I'll leave it on the guitar. I'll remove the neck and I'll get the neck in a vice and I'll still do it all. I'll carve it all off the guitar. So I'm going to crack on with that, see where I am with it, and I'll come back with another update later. Back with the warmth. Um, as you can see, the neck is now in the guitar repair vise, cushion both sides, so we're not going to mark anything. Here's the nut. I'm going to zoom in a little, and I'm going to explain to you how I've got the nut to be this shape. I'll just move the camera up a little. We've taken quite a lot off. I've gone across with various files. First, a coarse file. To remove the main material then I've come along with <clears throat> a fine number three file just to get the rough shape um, once we've got the rough shape I'm now going over I've got the shape I want the grooves are cut and cleaned 
Got across all the files, we're just about perfect. That was probably a little bit, probably need to just take a little bit off the top of there. I'll do a little bit more final shaping. As you can see, little file across, just small strokes. Just so I can see where I am. I think we're pretty good there. Uh, maybe just a little bit here. I don't want to take off too much because I can't add on. I've rounded these edges over just a little. I don't want to go too mental because I don't want to dig into the side of the guitar. But everything's masked up. We should be fine anyway. And then we're going to look at doing the polishing once we've got it where it, where, once we've got it where it needs to be. Now I've got some paper left over from doing a refret the other day, fret polishing. I've got a piece of 1000 here. And what I'm going to do is, first I'm going to polish these edges. And how I do that is I fold the paper over. And all I'm going to do is, Polish this corner and go this side, polish this corner. This is 1200 grit, shall I say, and then I'm just going to come over the top. And if I have to, I'll go over with my fingers and we'll just polish it off here. That's a rough shape. I need to go a tiny little bit deeper on these grooves, just a tiny bit. Um, I'll do all that when I've got the guitar and the strings back on and I'll do it one at a time. I've angled slightly back on the nut there, uh, giving us a gradient to fall back into the guitar for the string trees and everything. I hope I've not gone too far, I don't think I've, I think I've done fine there. But I'm going to polish with that and then I'm going to come over, I'm going to change to the, that's 1500 grit, it's some 1200 grit. I'll probably skip that bit out, I'll probably just do these edges with this. Beautiful. And finally, I'll take some 2000 grit, which I've got here. 2000, blah 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 blah. I'm just going to fold over and I'm just going to round off these corners. And polish over the top. And I think there we're pretty good. That's as close as I'm going to get it without having it on the guitar. So I'm quite pleased with that. It looks fantastic. It took quite a while to get the main material off because I had to use, well I used of course file, but the files are a bit blunt, some of my older ones. But I'm really pleased with how that's gone. I have to remove the tape, try and somehow sand this little edge here. Maybe I can just get this bit in. I don't want to, things with brass, whatever it is, it's going to um, tarnish pretty quick, it's not going to stay shiny long, it never does. Let's see where we are there, yeah, we've got a bit of a shine on there. And maybe I could just do a couple of folds, a couple of folds, it's going to give me a better edge, there you go. Same this side. And I think we're going to get a pretty good effect. These grooves just blown out a lot. That's just dust. It's just blown out. I might need to just cut in a little bit more on these grooves. I've got the files all here, um, and I'll explain how these files work again. Here you see we've got a ten side which fits there, and a twenty six side which fits there. We've got a 13 and a 36, 13 fits in there, 36 fits in there, cuts the grooves perfect, and this is a 17, 46, 17 fits in this slot there, and the 46 fits in this slot there. So how we get the grooves in, that's how we do it with uh, files, so absolutely brilliant. That's now ready to come back off, I can get this back on the guitar now, I'm going to remove all this tape, and I'm going to proceed with the setup, I'm going to restring it. And we're going to see where we are. Because that, like I said, that might be a tiny bit. Not too deep. We've only got half a string in there. I'm quite pleased with how that's gone, to be honest with you. That's pretty good. Once it's back on the guitar, though, I won't be cutting again. So that's it. We'll leave it there. Going to get it back on the guitar. And I'm going to proceed with the setup. And we'll see where we are then. Good afternoon. Uh, back with the warm-up. Just finishing up. Um, 
the guitar is finished, it needs a wipe over, but it's done. There's the nut I've cut, brought right down and repolished. I've just noticed something on the set I've just done the intonation, which was a, a little bit out. It was out on the E in the A strings, definitely. I've done the action and the radius at the bridge. Uh, we set everything all nice, we've got no fret buzz anywhere, we've got no buzzing strings. Like I said, just needs a wipe. There are three screws missing in the plate. Obviously, there's eight in there, but it's an 11 screw plate. So I don't imagine I've got three of them somewhere. I'll stick some of them in when I find some. But I've just noticed something on setting up the tremolo, look behind, and the wires off the bridge earth wire. So I'm going to solder that back, back on. Now, that is going to need some serious heat to heat this plate. So, what I do is I've got a special soldering iron for that, and I call this one Esmeralda. I call it Esmeralda because it's like a welder. Esmeralda the welder and it, it's an 80 watt iron. It's an Antex one, good brand. 80 watt, I don't use it for anything other than heating up these um, claws and for uh, soldering there. I very rarely get this out because it's so it's stupidly hot. So I'm gonna do that now. Um, and then the guitar will be done. Once I've done that, I'll be back with the final update on this. We'll wrap it up and it can go back. And there we go, it's all done. Uh, I found some screws, well I didn't find some screws, I know I had some screws to put in my scratch plate. I buy them in bulk. There you go, I've got a bag full there. Stuck them in, won't charge in for them. Just soldered on the earth wire onto the claw there, nice and hot. You're going to get it nice and hot with an 80 degree Celsius, uh, not 80 degree, an 80 watt iron. Job done, that's the guitar all set up. New nut, all cut nice, all put together. Uh, complete setup, jobs are good. And so that's it, it's the end of that one, and um, I'll get it back to its owner today, or at least let the owner know today. So, as always, till the next project, be good to each other, and I'll talk to you soon.